What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Latte Panda Delta. This is the little brother of the Latte Panda Alpha and this was announced earlier this year. A lot of people have been waiting for this and it's finally here. You can actually order it now and it will be shipped. Now in the past I have made a lot of videos on the Latte Panda Alpha and recently they did a hardware upgrade to the Alpha and I received one of those also. They're now using the 8100Y which has a much higher turbo boost at 3.4 gigahertz and I will have some videos coming up on this because I think we'll get a little better performance out of this than the original Alpha. But this video is all about the Delta, the younger brother to the Latte Panda Alpha and it's a much cheaper unit coming in at $188 instead of around $400 and personally I'm really glad this came out right now because the single board computer market has been really stagnant lately. It's just nice to see something new on the market that we can take a look at and see how it performs. Now this is powered by an Intel chip. This is not an ARM variant, so we can install all kinds of different operating systems very easily. From Windows 10, Linux, Android, Laka, RetroPie, there are tons of OSs that'll go right on this board. And inside of the box, you're going to receive the Delta itself. This does have the same form factor and pinout as the Alpha. So if you have any accessories working with that, it will work with the Delta. Like cases, touch screens, or any kind of hats. We also receive our USB Type-C power supply. A European wall plug. A US wall plug. Your user manual. We'll also get some plastic standoffs to kind of hold it up off of your desk. And our Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth antennas. Plus, they threw in a couple little Latte Panda stickers. So like I mentioned, it's the same exact form factor and layout as the Latte Panda Alpha. We have our three USB 3.0 ports, Ethernet, HDMI, USB Type-C. Round the bottom here, we still have those two M.2 slots, an SD card slot, and our EDP connection. Around top, it's using the same aluminum heat sink with the plastic cover, and we have 100 GPIO pins. So I know a lot of you are really interested in the specs on this single board computer, so let's go ahead and get right into them. So the unit I have here is known as the Latte Panda Delta 432. For the CPU, we have the Intel Celeron N4100. This is a quad-core CPU at 1.1 GHz with a burst up to 2.4. For the GPU, we have that built-in Intel UHD 600, 4 GB of LPDDR4 RAM running at 2400 MHz, and this is running in dual-channel mode, so we'll get the most out of those Intel graphics. Base storage on this is 32 gigabytes. It's using eMMC 5.0, but not to worry because this can be expanded from the M.2 slot on the bottom. Plus, we have a micro SD card slot. Built in 802.11 AC Wi Fi, Gigabit Ethernet, and Bluetooth 5.0. Three USB 3.0 ports, one M.2 M key, one M.2 E key, 100 GPIO pins, full size HDMI, USB Type C, and our EDP slot on the bottom. As for the operating systems, I did mention that this can run a wide variety of them, from Windows, Linux, Android, and so on and so on. This is using an x86 CPU, so as long as that operating system works on x86, you can probably install it on the Latte Panda Delta. So as single board computers go, this thing is packed to the brim, and it will definitely outperform the Raspberry Pi 4, the Odroid N2, or the Odroid XU4. And rightly so, because this is much more expensive than any of those other single board computers I mentioned. With the base price of $188 with no pre-installed operating system, we really need to get down and see how this thing really performs. So in this video, I'm going to be testing Windows 10 and I will have more videos coming up on the Delta. I know a lot of you are going to want to see an external GPU connected to this unit. So just let me know in the comments below what GPU you want to see running on this single board computer. All right, so here we are. I've installed Windows 10. I'm fully updated. I've been up and running for about an hour now without any issues whatsoever. We have that Celeron N4100 at 1.1 gigahertz, four gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and the GPU is the UHD 600. So I usually always like to start off with some benchmarks. So first up we have Geekbench 4, single core 1731, multi 4992. Now if we take a look at this compared to the Latte Panda Alpha, single core on that was 3400, multi core was 6592. So we have a much more powerful board with the Alpha, but it's a lot more expensive. Next on the list, a quick speed test on the internal 32 gigabyte eMMC. It's definitely not the fastest that I've seen and adding an M.2 drive to this will increase the speed significantly, but this will get you by. Now this is far from a super powerful CPU, but I did want to run Cinebench R15 and we scored 167. Remember, 
We're only at 1.1 gigahertz with four cores. And finally on the list is Octane. This is just a browser-based JavaScript benchmark. We scored a 14,611. If we compare this with, let's say, the Raspberry Pi 4 at the stock clocks, it scored a 7,760, and that's using the Chromium browser, kind of the closest thing I can get here to Chrome. But with a 2 gigahertz overclock on the Pi 4, it scored a 10,000. So it's getting kind of close here, but we still have significantly more performance in JavaScript. Another benchmark I usually like to run is 3DMark, but I decided against it on this because this is a low-end CPU. The scores aren't going to be great there. We're going to test some real-world GPU performance with some Steam games in just a second. But first up, I just want to go over the overall experience that I've had with video playback, image editing, and a few other things. And then we'll get into some PC gaming and some emulation. Alright, so moving on to some video playback, streaming, and native playback. Now this thing isn't going to work great for, let's say, a 4K Plex server. It will handle 1080p to a few different computers, but a chip this low powered, I wouldn't recommend as a Plex server. As a Plex receiver, it would work fine. But for this video, we're just going to check out some streaming from YouTube and some native playback from an external hard drive. So first up, we have YouTube. I've already got it buffering out here. I am set to 4K, but we have a viewpoint of 1920 by 1080 because I cannot record in 4K. Streaming from YouTube, either 720p, 1080p, 4K is going to be no issue as long as you can buffer properly. If you have a decent internet connection, you shouldn't have any trouble at all. We're getting zero drop frames here. Now I will admit I am using the Edge browser because it handles it a lot better than Chrome with these lower end chips. And as for native 4K 60fps playback from an external hard drive or internal, it shouldn't have any issues either. The highest I've seen my CPU utilization go is 18%. We're sitting at 60fps here. Now this is one of the harder videos that I always test on these single board computers and it's handling it fine here. Most of the ARM stuff just can't do this at 64K. The Delta should relatively handle light image editing pretty well using GIMP. This is free image editing software. It works really well. This is GIMP 2.10. And from here, I'm just going to go ahead and open up a image I downloaded. It's 8.8 .8 megabytes. And I usually just run a quick test like the color select tool. So by color, and I'll go with one of these leaves here has to calculate and find that same color throughout this picture. And there's a lot of it here, a lot of green. There we go. So I'll go ahead and select edit and I'll cut that right out. I can do the same thing with another shade of green. We'll do it over here. There should be more. So it's going to take a second. Edit, cut. So basic image editing with a system like this shouldn't be any issue at all. You could lay a couple layers down, you could throw some text on top if you want to, change the color, saturation, and you'll be good to go. You won't be waiting here all day. I definitely wouldn't buy one of these as a professional photographer, but for some light image editing, it'll get you by. So far so good. We got some image editing down, we got some 4K video playback, either streaming or native. Web browsing is pretty snappy on this thing. You'll be able to get all your emails done. If you want to do any work in Google Docs, it'll handle it just fine. Let's move over to some gaming. So first up, I wanted to start out kind of light with a newer 2D based game. This is Dead Cells. Great game if you've never tried it, definitely check it out. This is on Steam and pretty much everywhere else. For some odd reason, I couldn't get sound to display through HDMI with this game, no matter what I tried. Unfortunately, even at 720p, we can't hit that sweet spot of 60fps, but if you did set the V-Sync at half, you could get a constant 30 and the game is fully playable at 30. It's still a great game. Next up, we have an oldie but a goodie. This is Left 4 Dead 2. 720p, low settings, we're getting an average of 40fps. And again, this isn't perfect, but this is a very low-end CPU here. Hey, 
And finally, CSGO, 720p, low settings. This is a bot match and we're averaging around 29 FPS. It's pretty unplayable like this. I did want to test a few more, but these lower end games don't run well, so the newer games aren't going to perform well either. So let's go ahead and move over to some emulation. Now I do plan on making a full emulation video on the Latte Panda Delta, but I did want to test a few in this video. First up, we have PSP using the PPSSPP emulator. 3x resolution, first one's Tekken 6, running beautifully. Here's Dissidia, 3x resolution in this game natively ran at 30 FPS and we're getting a constant 30. Most PSP games are going to run at full speed at 2x, 3x, and some even at 4x like Little Big Planet, but you will run into the harder to run games like God of War Chains of Olympus and Ghost of Sparta that just won't run at 60 FPS constantly. There are going to be some dips here and there. I did drop this down to 2x resolution and as you can see we're not quite at full speed. Moving over to some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. This emulator is absolutely amazing. It runs really well on low-end chips, even upscaled. So basically, as long as the game's compatible with the emulator, it'll run on the Latte Panda Delta at full speed. This one really surprised me. I'm using the Vulcan backend. This is the Dolphin emulator running some GameCube games, and like I mentioned, I will have more coming up in a later video. This is a harder to run game, Auto Modalista. It is hitting that 60 FPS, but there are dips every once in a while. I was blown away to see it running at full speed here. Now this emulator is constantly being updated and it's getting better and better every day. But to see this game running at pretty much full speed on this low end chip really surprised me. And the last one, at least for this video, we have Soul Calibur 2. This is my go-to test. Really good frame rate here, constant 60, and it plays fine. The whole time I've been testing the Latte Panda Delta, I've also had it plugged into a watt meter pulling from the wall so we can see how much power this board pulls. Keep in mind, I also have a two terabyte USB 3.0 drive plugged into one of the USB ports on the Delta. Idle, 5.3 watts, 4K streaming, 7.1, and gaming, which was pretty extreme, at 15.2 watts. So as you can see, the board pretty much just sips power. And this is all from the wall. This isn't just the CPU. This is the whole board itself, including that USB 3.0 drive. So overall, I think the Delta did pretty good. Now keep in mind, this is not touted as a gaming machine whatsoever, and the CPU-GPU combination they used in here really shows that. But for everyday web browsing, light image editing, emulation, this thing is definitely rocking it, and I will have more videos coming up on this. Like I mentioned, I can connect an external GPU. I have a bunch of them laying around, even the 2080 Ti. If there's one you want to see, let me know in the comments below. I also want to do some Linux testing and some Android testing on this thing, so definitely stay tuned to the channel because I have a lot of videos coming up on the Delta. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I would definitely like to know your opinion on the Latte Panda Delta. This is definitely not the most powerful computer that I've ever messed around with on this channel, but for pulling less than 15 watts, I think it does a really good job. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the Delta, just let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to check out the description for some links. You can learn more, and if you're interested in picking one of these up, they are available right now on DF Robot. But like always, thanks for watching.